hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. Are you mouthing? No. <laughs> He's totally mouthing. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Throwing off my vibe. Uh, I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing. You, <laughs> you are definitely mimicking me. And this person mimicking me is David Rush Vibes Rushing. AKA the guy in all these photos behind me. That's not you in that one photo. Hmm? That's not you. What are you talking about? I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm going to say, I better, that better be me. It's in my house. Uh, I could have other, other people's no. photos up in there. No, house. we don't, we don't roll like that. Anyway, we hope you all are doing well. It is still February. February feels long. I'm going to be real. It feels like the year is going by really fast. Because I just, it? in my mind, I'm like, I can't believe March is in like a week and a half or two and a half My weeks. birthday is in 14 days. Yeah. So it's it's literally two weeks away. And that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, I think that the but first I still quarter feel is, like, is almost over. I still feel like February has gone by incredibly slow. Um, in my opinion, not slow, but it's just not as fast as it should be. Like, I feel like we should already be in March with all the things that have already happened yeah. in February. Um, we have, you know, we had Gorilla Glue and now <laughs> she's been, she's been saved. Um, might I she add got her first haircut, the doctor was a Ghanaian doctor. He was from Ghana, Dr. Obang. I actually happen to know a Dr. Obang. I don't know if Shout there's any, Dr. Obang. any relation to him, but, um, Yeah. My dad's doctor and friend, his name is Dr. Obang, based here in Charlotte, but it's not the same guy, but it could be like his cousin or something like that. So I, I'm very proud. Once again, Ghana on the map. This is why our parents tell us to grow up and become doctors and lawyers <laughs> and engineers. Do- doctors. Because you know what I noticed <laughs> is that, you know, like when we're doing the podcast and when we're talking and when we're talking to the girls, you have your, you speak as you're speaking now, but whenever you're on the phone with like your mom or your aunt, your your Ghanaian accent comes out. And I don't know cool. why, because I can't I can't speak my <laughs> I can't yeah. speak the native tongue. I can understand it, but I can't speak it. But I'm I've always been it's always gotten me in trouble. I tend to take on the accent of the person I'm speaking with. Oh really? Yeah. So um, You know uh, I You know what our problem here is, Jessica? <laughs> We have a little problem. Yeah, we don't have a hate problem here in America. You, we have a heart. We have a heart problem. So yeah, you that's. Need, um, we need more if love. If you spoke like this long enough, I would pick up that. In accent. the month I'm, of Feb February, with our Valentine's Day, we need to love more. We have a heart problem. Anyway, so yeah, I do. I, I'm not surprised you said that. I was. I I heard it when I was speaking to. Oh yeah, you always do it. To my my aunt and and my mom. Like I'll be upstairs. I'm like, did somebody come over? <laughs> then, <laughs> no, why it's was just, this? It's just this me. random African person uh, in my it's house. It's just me. But um, yeah, kudos to Doctor Obang who listened to his parents and, and became a doctor. And shout out to Tessica because she donated 20 G's of the GoFundMe money to an organization that helps with uh, situations like she found herself in that need that require like. Surgery or something. Like okay. That. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, well, I, I I heard I haven't been able to corroborate. To corroborate. corroborate I saw this, something but I heard about that she bought like a, twenty thousand, but I didn't read. I didn't actually read. I it. heard she bought a Benz though. I, I don't blame her. <laughs> um, I'm glad she was able to to come back. Here's a luxury that. vehicle for your own stupidity. Yeah. Um, I do. I do hope that there are some creative minds who work in the Gorilla Glue corporate who are thinking, well, this is what the doctor used to remove it. Maybe we come up with a hair product line that's just a step down or two from actual Gorilla Glue, but it's going to need something to release it. So you know how normally you you put a hair product in and you wash it out? This you would need, like the antidote that they create. I'm just just ready to see their Super Bowl commercial next year. (laughs) You really think they would do that? I don't know. I'm just I hope they. Stupid. What do you? I what, hope they what, don't. What's this concoction you have? So this concoction is 
There's history behind this, so bear with me. Um, it is a twist if I on. Known that, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have asked. It's a twist on one of my favorites. Um, I usually lo- I love a New York sour, so that's just a whiskey sour with red wine floated on top. But since we're in Black History Month, and I wanted to encompass a historical Black fact into my cocktail i essentially made a whiskey sour a cognac sour with hennessy now a lot of people um know about the relationship between black americans and hennessy and you know it's in popular music i mean old head drink hennessy young heads drink hennessy. anything is possible anything is possible anything matters anything counts um but there is a reason that Hennessy has such a great relationship with the black community. And it's because during World War II, and mind you, um, I'm taking a temporary leave of absence from my boycott of France because Cognac is, 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 France. is, from, is from France. Um, France during World War funds. II, when, when black soldiers were in France, um, France. They, they took a liking to Hennessy. And so, you know, that's where they pretty much got their big exposure. Now, Hennessy was actually the first spirits brand to invest in the black community. So it was the first one to put advertisements in Ebony magazine and in Jet. Um, They, I can't remember his name, but there was an Olympian that they brought onto their board and he served as like VP of urban marketing for three decades. So Hennessy has financially invested in the black community. And I think just because of that, like your grandfather, if your grandfather had gone to World War II and he was exposed to it, or maybe one of his boys and then came back from the war, um, don't do it. Okay, I thought you were gonna pull. I thought you were gonna pull a Hamilton reference. Came back, um, and he was he was drinking he was drinking Hennessy. um, So the balance shifts, (laughs) and he was drinking Hennessy. So like it's it's just kind of a generational thing, but it's not one of those things where it's it's oh you know we're just drinking it. Hennessy actually did invest in the black community. So you know I kind of wanted to pay homage in a time when you know a lot of big brands didn't really concern themselves with black consumers. Hennessy made that effort and you know, the loyalty is, is still running true. A lot of people think Hennessy is, is trash um, in terms of taste compared to other cognacs. Um, I think it, it depends on what, what just your flavor preference, your, your, your portfolio, probably, but probably could have done with um, saying that. I, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, built it up with this whole I know, I'm sorry, but I've heard a lot <laughs> You're of, like, but yeah, I, but some people think this is but trash. But a lot of people are like, yo, Hennessy is trash. I don't know why people drink Hennessy. Um, I don't mind. I don't yeah. mind a Hennessy cocktail. Uh, I love, I appreciate a Hennessy sour, but you know, I, I wanted a New York sour. We had a bottle of red wine open that I didn't want to go, um, to go bad. So I was like, you know what? I'll make a New York sour with Hennessy. Um, and that's what it is. So it's, it's the, the sour at the bottom. And then I floated some red wine on top and it it's, I just love the appearance of, of a New York sour. So, um, <laughs> I'm just having, yeah, I just, I, I, I feel put to shame now cause I'm just drinking giant Walker, but it is black label and I'm black in black history month. So I raise your whatever you just said it was. A cognac. Cognac. A new York. New York. New York. <laughs> a new, new year, New York. A New York cognac sour. Yeah. And I, it looks, it looks really cool though. I wish I could have got a, did like a, a slow-mo Instagram reel of you pouring it in. Oh, that would have been dope to go on the channel. Cool. Yeah, we need to do a lot better job of socializing uh, socializing on social media I and, by, and by on we I mean, I mean me yeah we just socialize have, wednesdays and i don't have any of the long end <laughs> not that i would be social um oh, i thought i gave it to you no i have not a one. Oh my bad yeah we're gonna put you to work then <laughs> Oops, gonna be our new intern I <laughs> <laughs> co co-host slash intern okay i'm here for it let me get them gpa hours yeah um so our Valentine's Day tree is still up. It's still up, but it I will know. it will be coming down. Um, oh, as I was, we I was going not to get, the tree, oh, but the Valentine's the, the Valentine's Day decor as we move toward uh, Easter. Easter. And yes, I'm skipping St. Patrick's Day. I did not want to culturally appropriate your holiday. Oh, I was just gonna say we could just leave the tree naked and then be green. Oh no, I was gonna put Easter decor on it. Initially, no, for St. Patrick's Day. 
No, I was just going to Easter decorate it. Oh, okay. Well, excuse uh, me. Initially, I was going to print out a bunch of pictures of me um, and hang it up because it's my, my birthday's coming up. And it, and my plan was when someone's birthday came up to decorate the tree. So we're really their, leaving this thing up all year. It's still, as long as it's still up, I'm going to keep decorating it. That's really just what it put, comes down We should have put Obama up there for president. We should have. We should have. So I, Thank I need, you. I need to get ahead and make sure my calendar is succinct. But... Um, if we do this again next year, maybe we'll get a secondary tree that doesn't take up as much space. Um, that we it's can not too big. It's not, but I feel like our corner could be used for. I'm like, what? What used to be there? I don't even remember. But you know, my plan was Those shelves. We got rid of. Oh yeah, my plan was Savi's birthday. I was going to put pictures of her up there, and then transition to Valentine's Day, and then my birthday, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think this is just going to be our preliminary trial year to see how this goes. So you know, I plan on going on over to Dollar Tree. And buying up their Easter decor and just, you know, Easter Jesus bunnying this tree all the way out. Should be, uh, should be exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, tonight it may actually be a relatively short, uh, episode compared to our past ones. Although I, I feel like Any, I, say, I, I say that anytime I say that we still go as long as, uh, we're going to do our first ever movie review. Review, review. Here review. on, on Rush Vibes. And uh, we're going to be discussing Malcolm and Marie. Are we just jumping right into that? No. Okay. But I'm just letting everyone know what the main main topic is going to be tonight. Eminem. Because um, I've heard, you know, how we, how we use the first 15 or so minutes to kind of like, you know, just, Warm you up. just talk about get whatever. You, get your feeling good. Um, that doesn't it's always like match. It's like audio foreplay. Always, <laughs> yeah. So that doesn't always match the uh, the title of the episode. So I don't want people to feel like we're... Uh, you know, giving them, selling them a bill of goods. So yeah, we'll eventually be talking about Malcolm and Marie, which I, I, I understand to be a very polarizing mm -hmm. uh, movie in terms of um, reviews from, I, from, I'm from, curious from to movie, hear, movie, movie goers. To uh, hear your opinion on it. Well, yeah, we watched it together. It took us a couple of nights because Jessica tapped out early. So okay. no, 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 no. Well, just, let's not get, in, just, let's just, not get we, into it. You tap you, you I said, did, but there's a reason. So it was maybe 15 minutes into the movie. I had had a drink that I had spiked with vodka because, you know, our kids have been on something else lately. So I just, I don't know yeah, what's they've going been on youth. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with them. So I, I was already like tired from dealing with them. I think I had worked all day. Um, so I'd been behind the computer all day. It was Saturday and I was just, you know, their first argument or the only argument, um, started yeah, it was just one long argument. and I was like, my spirit and my mind and my body just is, I don't have the mental capacity to make it through this entire movie right this moment. So I was like, David, I ain't got it. I'm not even going to front. I'm not going to fake. I'm just, I, I don't have it. Let's, let's call it. And that's what we did. And then we ended up watching it the, the following night. And we so. started earlier. I think we started at like 9.30. We, we started about 9, 9.30, yeah. Because we got the girls to bed a lot significantly earlier. So that makes a difference with us. Um, if you start a movie at 10.30, yeah. there's there's a good chance. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to be a good look. Mm -mm. So, that yeah, that'll be our main, um, and that'll be our entree. The entree yeah so that'll that'll we'll so are we at the charcuterie board right now sure do you know what a charcuterie board is <laughs> no I, well, I mean with context i figured it's it comes a, out before the entree no it's a you know that those fancy cheese plates that everyone's oh. making these days no nah, because i'm basic yeah <laughs> basic I don't, I don't know those fancy those fancy terms um so real quick before we we take our first okay. break and then we get into the review um you know, we're we we've talked about The Bachelor. Yes, we have on this on this this show before. Good and, old um, Bachelor. You know, uh, just to recap, and for anyone who's been not who doesn't follow The Bachelor, this is the first time in however 20, many twenty seasons some odd years that the uh, Bachelor is a Negro. black a, a black man, and he's, he's um, that naturally brought with it a lot of uh, expectations um, and. And and understandings and understandings and actually just a lot of doubt and skepticism um, because I'm I'm highly skeptical, but it uh, it came everybody kind of knew that this would likely be a very volatile uh, season, more so for what would happen in front of the camera. But it turns out 
uh, <laughs> uh, recently that I was unbeknownst to me. Yeah, did. I, I guess I just checked Dave out from social so media late. for a week, <laughs> and I saw I saw a blurb on Twitter the other day before this this week's episode, and uh, it said you know one of the contestants went to a uh, antebellum party uh, in 2018, and <laughs> apparently she's liked some potentially potentially racy posts on social media because you know like once once the once somebody on the internet gets to sniff that you may have some just a, just a small potential potential of a problematic past they're just going to dive into everything and the internet you know the internet comes for us all eventually so uh, they pulled up some things and then that actually spiraled into you know a lot of social media buzz about is this young woman does she have you know, she's racist and, you know, it's not a good look because, you know, she's white. She's from Georgia, Cummings, Georgia, I believe. And then, you know, she she's rumored to be making it late into the uh, into the, the contest. Pretty sure he picks her. And uh, so, of course, Rachel Lindsay, the first black bachelorette, she she is into a number of things. Uh, one of my favorite podcasts to listen to with with Van Lathan, uh, Higher Learning. But she also does extra, I believe. Mm-hmm. And she actually interviewed Chris. Chris Harrison. Um, formerly known as my guy, <laughs> uh, and 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 kind of she she pushed him on it, and he was said he wasn't defending Rachel, but he kind of, uh, Rachel in terms of the the woman on the show, the contestant this season, said he wasn't defending her, but saying you know well, maybe it's inappropriate inappropriate to be at an antebellum party in 2021, but maybe not so much in 2018. Who am I? Who are you to say what is? Let's pot. Let's un- so let's what? Un- uh, wait, let me let me. <laughs> This isn't a bit, but let me do the bit. <laughs> let me drop. Let me do let me fill everybody do in. Do the bit, David. Um, yeah, so they they went back and forth, and I listened to a little bit of the the higher learning episode after that interview. And Rachel was saying that Chris wasn't really sorry after they finished the interview. He was just kind of who he was, and he wasn't apologetic. But then after that hit the hit YouTube, and you know people started to uh, boycott uh, the franchise. Boy, you know, it called for. You know, call for some changes. And then, of course, Chris gave an apology. And then he came back the next day and decided and said that he was stepping away from the franchise for a little bit so that, you know, he could get better educated. And, you know, the typical uh, PR PR uh, so memo that, that, means- that goes out. So <laughs> so he'll obviously finish because I, I imagine The Bachelor is done if if maybe only a couple episodes they, they haven't filmed yet. But I guess the next Bachelorette season, they won't have um, he won't be there, if at all, at least mm-hmm. for the start. So. Whatever you were gonna, gonna um, say. I wanted to just unpack his his whole interaction with with Rachel Lindsay um, because, <laughs> and I, I highly recommend you go and watch it. I watched I've watched snippets of it. Uh, initial, so we'll start from the jump. Initially, I saw either on Facebook or on Instagram someone talk about this Rachel contestant uh, attending an antebellum party and like dressed in, you know, the dresses. And initially I thought nothing of it. I was like, okay, like, you know, it's a, it's a Southern, you know, old school Southern party. Yeah, I mean, coming, um, coming Georgia. Yeah. Uh, and it was supposed to be like for their sorority. I guess they rented Sun, out a plantation. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to Cummings, Georgia. I'm not driving through it. Uh, not getting for gas. Nothing. Um, hey, so, I remember, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, First aside of, oh God. of of the I episode, know, know um, me and my me and my adopted Alan makes it into another episode. Mm-hmm. We uh, we went down to um, go watch a bowl game for A uh, and T. His alma mater. Shout out to the Aggies. Whoop, whoop. And it was it was in Atlanta and at the, the Mercedes Benz Stadium. And we were coming back and we stopped. It brought, I don't think it was coming Georgia, but we stopped in some somewhere outside of in the Atlanta metro area. Uh, close to the South Carolina border, and um, he was pumping First gas. I, I needed to use a bathroom, so I went in. <laughs> was, I got walked in, and it was literally like record scratch. And everybody just like turned and looked at me, and I was like, "Yeah, you know what? I think I can hold it." So I turned right back around. I was like, "Yo, we gotta get, gotta get the <laughs> got gotta, to go, gotta get up out of here." So, uh, in Lovecraft, when they were talking about this season, <laughs> Lovecraft uh, Country this season, if you haven't watched it, they talked about. They were in a sun downtown, so um, that's my experience. And yeah. So yeah. far, my only experience has been in Georgia, so yeah. that's why I usually I'm either in Atlanta or I'm driving through Georgia. There's no there's no no, no stops. Yeah. I might make an exception for Athens. I feel like Athens might be safe. Yeah. It's not. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm saying if I had to stop, I don't want to run the risk. I'll put it that way. 
Anyway, so initially when they put po- and I and guess, I got dreadlocks now. Oh yeah, oh they. <laughs> let's not let's not. I almost said something I shouldn't say. Uh, so I think I'm just one of those black people who don't around here, boy. <laughs> who, who don't, a little far from home, ain't you? <laughs> who don't initially jump to like, oh, that's racist. I don't know. Like some, I mean, there are some things that are blatant, but in my mind, I was like, oh, like okay, some white sorority girls had a dress up party. Um. I'm surprised that there wasn't like a black face <laughs> photo that came out because it was that all the ingredients is a perfect storm. It, it really was. The South all, 2018. The only other like, thing I can imagine is that Paula Dean was there and they had hired some <laughs> black folks and they dressed them up in, you know, old school uh, house workers. I think there's, there's outfits. allegedly a photo of her at one of those, a party, maybe not that one, where one of the friends was dressed up like a, um, don't say it. Black friends is dressed up like a like a slave. Oh, so, yeah. But that's uh, that's unsubstantiated. So. I'm looking it up. I'm gonna look it up. So, so I probably shouldn't have even said it. I apologize. All the journalists it's out probably, there. It's probably it's probably it's probably fact. Um. So I thought nothing of it. Uh. And then I, you know, I took a minute, a moment, as I was seeing it continue to pop up, and I was like, okay, well, I know, I kind of know. I guess I separate antebellum, the antebellum. It's hard to do that because the antebellum South does include slavery, but you know, because of like Lady Antebellum and the use of the word so recreationally. I think they changed their name. They though. did. Now they're just Lady or lady. the Lady. Or um, lady A or something like that. But it's still antebellum because if you're gonna put Lady A, it's just an acronym. Um so I didn't necessarily jump to any like con- racist conclusions. And then I thought about it and I was like, okay, antebellum and the dress. I mean, the dresses are pretty from that time period. Um, if you're historical, like if you care about history and just, you know, history through fashion, you can appreciate that. Um, but then, you know, I really, I start to, maybe I bandwagoned it. You know, I saw all the other, all the other educated black people start getting mad. I was like, Oh, how dare is she? Um, and yes, I said Dareth. Uh, and then I saw I saw the interview, and then when Chris was like, "Is it inappropriate for 2018 or 2021?" and Rachel hit him with like, "Low key, it's it's it, it was inappropriate during right. antebellum times to dress up right. antebellum style." So yeah. I don't know if Chris can make a comeback. I don't know if he can if he can turn it around. It's definitely, I think it's smart that he stepped back. So he kind of kind of controls the narrative. Um, I think The Bachelor is so much of a white franchise to begin with that there aren't enough white people that will actually care. Uh, I did see on Twitter because I live tweet The Bachelor um, and one one woman posted. She was like, I will be bleak. I will no longer be watching a franchise that <laughs> um, that allows a host to participate in racist rhetoric, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was like, all right. All right, Sharon, thank you for that feedback. Carry on with um, your acai bowl. Um, Deuces. Deuce. I appreciate you boycotting, but Black Twitter, we're going to stay here. We're going to own it. So um, we we were okay with it, but we expect you to was, not be okay with it. It was kind of funny this week when his first, <laughs> his first scene on the TV, somebody tweeted, uh, you remember ATL, movie ATL, mm-hmm. um, the big boy scene? At the end of the movie, he was like, "Boy, I know that ain't who I think it is." <laughs> Good old Chris. Well, yeah, I guess a lot. Of, I mean, it was just a joke, but obviously they recorded this episode before. Mm, yeah, many all this stuff many happened. months. Yeah, ago. I um, you know, I uh, I don't really have much. I mean, I looked at it. You know, obviously, I was late to the. I found out. You I were guess real like late. four or like, five why days. Did you tell me it's like um, like four or five days after everybody. Uh, everybody, I guess, we was were done talking it. about it. Um, so I was able to kind of look at it. Uh, after the the firestorm, so to speak, and I don't know, I I feel like we should be able to to we should temper our expectations, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and not to be this disres- like not to be uh, disrespectful in any way, shape, or form. But if if I I am not surprised that a young woman from the deep south was caught. Happily, <laughs> at Doing an something. antebellum party in 2018, she could have done it last week, and I wouldn't have been surprised. Um, because that's just, I mean, you just look at demographics, and not to be stereotypical, but I mean, it's what they do. It's 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 kind of a, as as 
It's a white. Per, as, I, I was gonna say, as per the of, as per the party. I mean, that's just a thing that happens in in the South. They it's have a white those, rite of they passage. Have those, they have those I parties. Think you guys have to so, do something racist. So, um, you know, I, and I think a lot of times it's because it's probably been a thing that she, that has been a part of maybe her culture growing up that she didn't. She may not have even thought about, mm-hmm. you know, how other people could could perceive it and how other people were impacted by those parties way, way back in the day. She was probably just doing it because people, that's what they do down in Cummings, Georgia. Um, so, now, so, now, well, now hopefully she is aware of. Yeah. What she it, released a really good apology. Um, so um, people were saying it like it's six weeks late, but I mean, I mean, I mean, you don't, you don't know what you don't know. I mean, I, we, I don't know her. We don't, none of us really know her. So only she knows if, if she really knew the, the history of those, I feel those some types type of, of way gatherings. that she's the only contestant who got a whole shopping spree. Yeah. She got a nice shopping spree too. Yeah. She got some red bottoms. Yeah, I would have loved to have gone on a shopping, <laughs> gone on a shopping <laughs> spree. I'd have bet whoever he needed me to bottoms. be just to go get some, <laughs> go, go Would down Rodeo. And Antebellum. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff got some high resale okay, value. So let, I could have got it, and we only got a couple of minutes before our break. Put your like, put yourself in a white person's shoes, um, because I know we how easily how we jump to some assuming what should they should and shouldn't do in these type of situations. So what? Because obviously she doesn't have any black friends, I can't. and there are no black members in that sorority. Um, so what? Like, what are white people supposed to do? Like, are you supposed to be, you know, when you were growing up and they were like, if you see someone being bullied, you're supposed to stand up and say something. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, it's probably just, it was just part of of what she saw is likely a part of a, a society that she was around and in growing up and she just, just did it. I don't know that she ever really thought about it. So I don't, I can't put myself in a white person's shoes. I've never been white. Just like, I don't expect a white person to be able to put themselves in, in a black person's shoes, let alone a black male. So it's. I, it's, it's an unfortunate situation. Um, luckily, everybody eventually treated it with, with you know, the, the the white, gave the white glove treatment and, and acknowledged, you know, where perspective is, is needed and, you know, let let it all, let the chips fall where they may. But it's, um, it was just interesting because it's like with all the other drama on camera, because mm-hmm. drama just is synonymous with The Bachelor and Bachelorette, Lord. like this stuff was happening off um off screen but uh i don't want us to get too far ahead so let's go ahead and take our first break we can finish this up when we come back and then we'll get into malcolm and marie cool cool all right for those of you watching the video <laughs> i was gonna say if anybody's paying really close attention to jessica's hair it probably looks way different than it did before we went on um we went on our break but i'm just i'm struggling with this you know natural hair life um my hair is usually braided or blown out um yeah. So I'm working on it. Yeah. Um, did you want to wrap up? Was there anything else we wanted to touch on? Yeah, I guess I just, uh, okay. I want to. I was em- hoping you said no. I want to okay, emphasize that, you know, like white people, y'all just need to have more black friends um, and black friends. You need to be more willing and able to speak up when your white friends are doing something or saying something that's racist um, or can be perceived as racist, you know, be be the black savior for your your white white no. people's feet. So I, I think it's uh, wow. Um, I just think it's important to approach people with uh, with grace um, when you're when you're calling these things out that could be. Um, perceived as racist, such as Rachel's part. Now, this is a thing because I haven't, I haven't jumped into the jump down the rabbit hole because allegedly there are like social media posts that she's either liked or or uh, endorsed or whatever. That. Um, that would would be a little bit more inflammatory. I I can't vouch for that. So as far as I know, all that she's done is just attended the Ann's Mellon parties. So you know, just. I mean, she's aware of it now, and she probably wasn't aware of, like, the significance of it. So, hopefully, her apology was genuine. Um, and, you know, she can continue to be sensitive to, to you know, the the impact now that she's on this national platform. Uh, the things that she engages in, um, the impact that they have on, on other people. Also, uh, or how quickly, the, Or how quickly people will call out. Who's the casting skeletons. director for these shows? Because they're not doing a good job. If they, I feel like going through people's social That's medias, true. Twitter, 
Instagram, Facebook, digging in, sitting them down. Mm-hmm. I think from now on, it should just be a defaulted question. Like, have you participated in any racist, racist activities in or your past? Or activities that could be perceived as, as racist. As because racist. there are racist. If they can be perceived as racist, they're probably racist. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> We're getting really heavy into this, and I, I, that was more supposed to be the what did you call it? Smorgasbord? <laughs> <laughs> what? Charcuterie board? Yeah, that's what I meant. You know Schmorg- what I meant? Smorgasbord. Uh, also Schmorg- known as <laughs> a smorgasbord of cheese. I mean, it's it's an accurate. It's an. It, um, I'm not mad about it. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I want to get into Malcolm and Marie. Malcolm and Marie. So, um, I'm set the table. Can I set the table? Set it. All right. So uh, this is a movie that was filmed uh, during the pandemic. So it's uh, it takes it's literally two people through the entire movie. Um, it's shot at a house in the the can the hills of, of Malibu, and it runs for about an hour and, and forty six minutes, mm-hmm. and um, it's in black and white. Mm-hmm. So it is not your your typical, you know, twenty first century uh, the major motion picture. But um, has caused a lot of uh, responses, has has, has prompted a lot of responses on on social media. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts because we watched it together, but we did not speak about it because we knew that it was it had potential for a Rush Vibes uh, to be on a Rush Vibes podcast. And here we are. Oh, I thought it it was just a trigger. (laughs) No, it wasn't a trick. No, it's not a trigger. Uh, And and this is something that we will. That we'll get into when we each give our uh, give our piece on it, but I just figured that it would be a great conversation for the podcast. So um, we love to be organic. We love to be real. A lot of the things that we talk about, we haven't talked about beforehand, um, except for when we talked about the New York Times article because I, I needed to be sh- needed to know if I was going to have any bullets flying my way. So, um, but yeah, what uh, what was your takeaway from the movie? Um, I. Spo- uh, spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen it, obviously. But, yeah, okay, um, just wanted to put that out there. It was. I thought it was good. I thought it was. So my 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 little cousin and I chatted about it a little bit. Shout out to Georgia. Georgia. Esquire. Georgia. Um, no relation to Cummings, Georgia, where the racist activity takes place in The Bachelor. Oh, that's enough. Uh, <laughs> um, that's enough. I. <sighs> I feel there's a lot to unpack with Malcolm and Marie. It is Malcolm, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know why I have Miles. Who's Miles? Probably in like Miles Davis or something. Maybe, maybe that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the movie starring John David Washington and Zendaya. Yeah, Go. and I got the I got the luxury of telling my cousin that John David Washington is Denzel Washington's son, and she was very, very hurt and disappointed. Um, but that's another topic for another day. So it Miles Mal, what are you saying? Malcolm and Marie are pretty much the, She didn't know that I think we no, she didn't. I think we all know a toxic Georgia, we're gonna have a conversation. Y'all have to have a lot of conversations. I think we all know a toxic couple like Malcolm and Marie. Um the couple that you wonder why they're still together. But you recognize that both of them have such individually toxic traits that they almost can't be successful in a relationship if it's not so with each other. Um, let's let's make sure we let everyone know, like the I know I'm the I'm, center, the let me do the, the bit. Okay. The so bit. you know when we first started the movie on Saturday, um, like I said, we were 15 minutes into it. And they, you know, an argument was was starting. And you know, as as a member of a relationship, you know, I'm a member of this relationship. I don't know why I termed it like that. Um, you can recognize when an argument is starting, and you know, her body language was very much so. I'm going to act, do my best to act like I'm not upset with you, but I'm very much so upset with you. And you know, once you get into the movie and you figure out like where he messed up, um, it makes sense. But I think what I took away from it is when you get into an argument with someone and they apologize, two things happen. You you either forgive them 
and then or when the argument gets really big and then it kind of diffuses and you're like in bed you're in your separate corners and you're like man why didn't i say this why didn't i come for his mama why didn't i come for this why didn't i do that why didn't i remind him of that one time he did this blah blah blah, blah. so you're kicking yourself for all of the things that you didn't say but in a normal argument with normal people who are civilized, the argument's over. So it's there's no going back. You have to archive those things for the next argument. But I, what I felt that the movie did was it showed us everyone essentially saying everything that you don't say. The thing that you know in the back of your mind, if you say it, is, is too far, will really genuinely hurt. But under normal circumstances, the argument's already ended. So you're reflecting on this and you're like, oh, I'm glad I didn't say this. Or if I had said this, this like that would have been the last straw. But with their, arg- their argumentative style, they were re-bringing things back and, and, and putting that like there was no one had the last say it, and when you get to the end of the movie and the way it ended you you realize that they probably it was probably a healthy form of arguing because everybody got their peace out and his last apology i felt was more genuine than the one from the beginning of the movie um they're both they're both very toxic individuals but they, I think the movie is really, and again, I, I, I mean, I haven't read any reviews. I haven't, you know, watched any interviews about it, but I feel that the movie really targets the truth with arguing. And for me personally, it, it seemed like every, every part, the argument was, it's, the mo the, the night was, essentially supposed to lead to them having sex. Um, but something would happen that would re spark the argument. So for me as a viewer, I was like, would y'all just do it and like get the, like all of this could be over. If, if there was just, just one moment of intercourse, all of this could be like no more fighting, but something would happen. Like there was that one scene where she, like they, they were, they were kissing. They were like, getting started he went to go use the bathroom and i remember as a viewer i was sitting here i was like no don't leave hold it don't don't go pee don't do it and then it goes back to her and a teardrop rolls down her eyes and i I was just like yep there it is here we go it it's it's starting it's your turn oh okay cool um so uh yeah i didn't read anything about the movie beforehand i saw i showed jessica the trailer uh like about a month ago we looked at it and we're like, oh, okay something that, that we kind of knew we were we were gonna watch together so um the movie starts with uh malcolm and marie they're together obviously as jessica's already established they're coming home uh malcolm is a uh an artist a director who um had his first um the first project that he directed, produced, and, and wrote. Um, I guess it, it was either at, at, a, at a film festival, but he basically screened it for, for a bunch of people, um, and they were coming home from, from the screening. So he's naturally on, like, a high. Like, start the movie, he's, like, pouring a, a bottle of, you know, or a glass of something, and he's dancing throughout the house. And um, like Jessica said, you notice that Marie, played by Zendaya, her body language is just is just off. Like, she's just, just kind of kind of indifferent she wasn't you, in that you, black boy yeah, joy you could tell that it was there was something occupying her mind um and you know it the movie starts with uh malcolm just dancing in like a, this long circle talking about his movie and you know like the people he's gonna the the other uh directors that he's gonna be mentioned in the same sentences as and you know like barry jenkins and and um oh singleton and, and, and singleton and spike lee and uh, just talking about it literally for like the, f- gosh, I want to say it was like four or five minutes. And and I'll get into the creative aspect of the movie later when I, when I, I give my, my mm. final thoughts. But um, eventually he, he realizes that something is wrong um, with her. Took and, him long and, enough. And he, and he asks her, yeah, typical, typical guy. After he's done talking, gloating and <laughs> talking, about, his best. talking about his movie, he asks, hey, baby, what's wrong? And uh, it turns out that in the and he gave a speech, I guess either before the movie or after the movie had had, had screened, 
and he thanked everyone except for Marie. Everyone. You know, um, he thanked the janitor at the elementary school. Okay, I don't know if he did um, that, but and and this is literally the the tip of the the iceberg, and then it, it just the, literally the entire movie is, is an argument the rest of the way. Um, so I. I actually thought it was a very good movie, honestly. And I, from a creative standpoint, I appreciated certain aspects, like the fact that it was shot in black and white, the mm-hmm. fact that there are only two people there, the fact that the first part of the movie is like one continuous shot. Like there's not a cut for like, I want to say it's at least five minutes um, where he's, you know, he's kind of dancing back and forth and the camera goes from him to, to Zendaya. Um, silence is used very well mm-hmm. in the movie. Um, there, There's just gaps of, of silence, but it's, it's it's profound. It's usually it's on the heels of an argument. Um, a lot of still shots. Uh, so it was it from a from a creative standpoint. I thought I thought I thought it was brilliant cinematography. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people were like, "Oh, well, these people just argue." They were just arguing. Like literally, the whole movie was an argument, and I don't really understand. But it's interesting because I swear that's like sixty seventy percent of what I see on Twitter and Facebook. Anyways, <laughs> people complaining about their toxic relationship experiences or their toxic interactions with members of the opposite sex. So I'm like, are y'all just mad because this movie was just a mirror and <laughs> y'all, are seeing, life. y'all are seeing what, what you put on social media a uh, majority of the time. So I thought, I thought a lot of that was just kind of like, okay, but uh, no, I thought, I thought it was good. And like you said, it, it was, um, they kind of had to work all their stuff out before. Uh, I think that there was a realized appreciation um, and a record rec- recognition recognition of value at the uh, at the end of the movie. Thank you, by the way. You're welcome. And uh, I, I thought it was it was um, it was very good. Mm-hmm. It was a very 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 good movie. Very unorthodox, Definitely. I guess. I but agree. it was it was awesome. I, I think I really really enjoyed it. Um, um, to to so your, my oh, you're still going. Okay, I'm speaking. Sorry. <laughs> to. Uh, what I think the entire movie boils down to, though, because if you notice at the end of the movie, uh, and I'll, I'll spoil alert, when Malcolm says, you know, I'm sorry and thank you, and Zendaya says, you're welcome, and then she turns out the light, or I think she may have already turned the light out. Um, she says, you're welcome, and then it cuts to the next morning. I think it, the movie really symbolizes how, uh, at least in heterosexual relationships, um, where say you have the male, the, the man in the relationship, he's like, um, a really successful business person or an athlete or an art musician, artist, whatever. Um, and the woman may not have as established of an individual career, mm-hmm. uh, how big a role they play in the success of, of their partner, but how easily they can be taken for granted forgotten. and forgotten. And I, I think, this entire, like the entire fight could have been avoided if he had just not necessarily, like, obviously it was, it was a big slight to not recognize mm-hmm. her not thank her first and last. But if after recognizing it, if he had just said it and meant it and been sincere, like just take some time to think about it and then just said it, it the whole movie could have been like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. But of course, you know, they had things that they needed to work out. He said some nasty stuff. Um, but it, it also shows just like how sometimes in a relationship, your partner just wants to be validated. Yeah, they, they have the validation and they just need to be acknowledged. And it's so easy uh, in a pandemic. Um, you're with each other. You're on top of each other day after day after day to just kind of take the other person for granted because they're always always there. You Mm -hmm. wake up and every day is like you've said, every day is exactly, I can tell you exactly how every day is going to go. No groundhog's day. Is that what that is? When things are the same every day? There's a term that you Americans use. Deja, uh, I don't know, not deja vu. I think it's groundhog day. It's either, I think it's groundhog's day. Somebody mentioned, somebody I I'm feel like C. Finish. Tucker knows, so you can. I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for it. You know, because you, you got that wisdom. Um, sorry. So yeah, no, I just think that. Um, yeah, it was, it was interesting to, to see that, and uh, obviously, I've, we've been together long enough where that's, that's, been an issue that we've, we've, uh, or I've struggled with, um, and you've, you've, 
I struggle. Let too. let me know about it on 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 numerous occasions, and but it's easy now that be, but because we've had those experiences, it was easy for me to, to like almost like immediately identify like that Leonardo DiCaprio meme from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where he's like pointing at the TV. Like I did that almost immediately. Like ooh, I figured that's it what, out. That's that's the problem right there. So, but I do think they they also touch on communication because. She talks about how the story is about her, even though he tries to say, you know, it's not really about her. Um, You can tell a portion of it is about her. And they clearly don't communicate because what really does stick out to me is the moment where like the tears running down her eyes. She's laying on the floor. He's gone to the bathroom and, you know, she asks, why didn't you cast me? So, I think that might have been the moment where you realize she's she's into she's in the entertainment world um, herself or or wanted to pursue it. And I think I really took away that, you know, he's men sometimes I've always the reference I've always had with men is, you know, men are like waffles and, you know, waffles have individual <laughs> have, have it. I had an extra dr- some leftover drink, so I. I made I made it for him and he's about to drink it for those of you who are not watching but listening. So the the reference that I learned and this was like back in early college, maybe my freshman year, men are like waffles. So you know, waffles have you know, the waffle iron has boxes and you pour the syrup and the syrup goes into the individual boxes. Whereas women were like spaghetti. So, you know, you have one piece of spaghetti that's over here, but it wraps all the way around the plate and you can twirl it and it it all mixes together. So I I noticed that, you know, she was genuinely hurt by the fact that he didn't even consider her to be in this role. And in his mind, I don't even know that it dawned on him to, to even think about her. And I, I believe she did audition. Um, but you know, I think her expectation would have been that he would have fought harder for her to be a part of it. And I think sometimes men can be very absent minded, Um, because you guys are very compartmentalized. So if it doesn't fit into this compartment, like you're not really going to bother yourself with it. Whereas we women, um, a lot of us women, we always are acknowledging other people's feelings and how this affects other people. And, you know, how can we involve other people, um, that we care about? I'm not talking about everybody. I don't need to come for everybody. So that's something that really connected with me. I could almost feel her hurt in that capacity. Um, you mentioned that the whole movie is in black and white, and I think that it is great that they filmed it in black and white. I think any color would have taken away from your focus on the two of them. And it's weird saying that, because if it was in color, we would have just watched it in color and been just fine. But thinking about it as I play it back in my head, color would have taken away from the intensity and I, I, I almost say anxiety that the movie brought. Like I, I had a sense of anxiety every time, you know, I thought the fight was over and then a new one would like, it would restart. It was honestly like to be continued. It was like watching a nineties TV show and every episode, like every five minutes was to be continued by the next argument. And everybody was a star. Like they took turns being the star, but I think it was, it was beautifully filmed. And I think again, I haven't read any bad reviews. I haven't read any reviews, so I might have to go back, but I think negative reviews really come from the discomfort that it shows in terms of how people are toxic and how their toxicity manifests in their relationship and the fact that they're toxic in their relationships and they still stay in these relationships um, because they recognize that they, to an extent, might need to be toxic and might need someone to take an element of their toxicity. Um, There's something else I was going to say. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that despite the fact that it was filmed in a pandemic, we all know it was filmed in a pandemic. There are only two people in the whole movie. There's no reference of the pandemic. And, you know, I get, I get it. Companies have had to make pandemic pivots, restaurants. Everybody has had to do a pandemic pivot, but I am so tired of all these shows incorporating the pandemic. Um, I get it. It's part of our life now, but it's not as if we haven't lived 
a in a world without a pandemic. So I, it's almost like some of us want to escape the pandemic. You know, you turn on the news in the afternoon, pandemic, vaccine, shots, blah, 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 blah. Evening news, vaccines, shots, death count, international, new strains, like the new, new coronavirus. And all of these shows were on before the pandemic. And if they've been able to safely film, I would app- I appreciate the shows that are either time pieces that, you know, they took place in the early 90s. Um, so, you know, it doesn't, there's no pandemic affecting it. Um, so I appreciate that there wasn't a mention of the pandemic in the movie at all. It was just two people who had just gotten home and now they're having an argument. Um, so that's something that I, I took away from it because they, it seems like everybody wants to bring up the pandemic and he, and I don't think it's necessary. It's like pastors. If you watch church during this whole pandemic, every pastor is preaching about the pandemic. And I'm like, yo, the Bible been around long before this pandemic. You mean to tell me there's no other sermon that you got in your back pocket like we have to hear about the pandemic every Sunday? Get, like, come on. Let's preach about Job again. Like, let's go back to the old school. You know, pastors always try to make any any current struggle relevant I know, to, and the, it's, to and, the Bible. And, and it's too much it for me. It was like that one tweet I saw years ago <laughs> where somebody was, like, recounting uh, their pastor in church. The pastor was like, I guess there was, like, this big storm. And he was like, how many of y'all lost... Uh, how many of y'all lost power he said everybody raised their hand and he was like y'all didn't lose power you lost electricity your real power is in jesus <laughs> it like was it did the little viola davis gift where she like picks up her bag and walks, <laughs> out, walks out the room um nah well so real quick because let's go ahead and, and take this out because uh we're, we're, we're close to needing to take a break um i don't know how that's any different than like like a biopic or a movie based on somebody's life. Like it, it takes place in a certain period of time and it's recounting Mm -hmm. everything that happened during that period of time. So just because we happen to be living in history, doesn't mean, I mean, I don't know how it's really any different than any movie or, I just don't want to see TV shows. Okay. Well, it's a personal thing, but I do want, but you can at least acknowledge that it's really no different than any kind of movie or TV show where they're, where they're reportraying, Actually yeah, so in five years they can do movies about 2020 and 21 about yeah. the pandemic but we were living in a life pr- without a pandemic so it's not like this is something new to us so like shows like this is us where they've incorporated the, incorporated the pandemic they've done well about it but they could have just filmed it like a regular show like how they had previous sure. seasons and given viewers an escape because i think a lot of people need an escape from the pandemic sure. even though we might be on the tail end of it it would just be like there's this one show i'm watching the resident they had one episode half the episode was about the pandemic they put like a little disclaimer and they said now we're you know in a time post pandemic vaccines have been distributed so like life is back to normal and i was like thank you i don't have to watch people on tv acting in masks i don't have to deal with that anymore like they addressed the pandemic it existed now we're past it Mm -hmm. you could have done that but so that's it i'm done that's all i had to say about that okay so malcolm and marie uh definitely i won't say go see it because i imagine everybody has a netflix so just watch it or bum it because you probably barring somebody's account login anyway um i thought it was very good i think jess thought it was very good as well i think we should watch it again actually yeah we can do that um so yeah two thumbs up or a thumb and a half up from from rush vibes uh so uh now we're into the part of the episode where we solicit <laughs> so uh be sure to hit the like button if you uh if you're you're vibing with this episode uh so be sure to subscribe also if you haven't if you're watching us for the first time welcome hey uh be sure to watch some of the other episodes but also also hit that subscribe button um you can you can find us on social media i got the the accounts popping up down below and um you can also support the channel we're on uh cash app dollar sign r-u-s-h-d-v-i-b-e-s don't forget uh starting in march we're gonna start having guests uh and march is going to be mompreneur month and we've got some really awesome moms who are doing some really awesome things in terms of uh businesses and um just really building their careers wow wearing the many hats of, of being a mom in, in a pandemic, uh, let alone just in the world today. So I'm uh, really excited about that. And um, we uh, can't wait to hear everyone's feedback. 
So be sure to, as you guys have been doing, um, our, our 46 subscribers and, and everybody else who's found us on the web has been leaving has done a great job leaving comments and we try to jump in there and, and leave responses where we can. Um, so we really do appreciate all that engagement. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to March. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Finally having some some guests on. We've we've been uh, you know working behind the scenes and asking people if they'd be willing to come on, and and it's just, it'll be great to finally see a lot of that come to fruition. So uh, new episodes every Wednesday. Be sure to leave a review uh, if you're listening to us. Obviously, you're if you're watching on on YouTube, you can like and comment. Um, but if you're listening to us audibly, be sure to uh, leave a review and rate us on whatever platform that you're listening to your podcast on so that uh, it can help with our discovery. So did I miss anything? No. Cool. Are we done done? We're done done. We're going, we're, we're going out. Under an hour? We're going out. Jay Buck's bringing us, he's taking us out. So um, that's it for this week. Uh, it's still a pandemic. Be safe. Wash your hands. Social distance. Wear a mask. I'm Dave. I'm just This is Rush Vibes You guys be safe We love you We out Stop me now Stop me now Yeah I done came way too far Stop me now